Hello guys! Our next video is about sample journal entries on investment. We have the following forms of investment in business. Cash investment, cash investment where a portion of the cash is deposited in the bank. Cash and non-cash investment. Investment with assumption of liabilities. An investment of asset with a fair market value. So how are you going to analyze transactions? So for each of the transactions, answer the following questions. So you have to answer the four questions para ikaw ay mahagawa ng journal entries. So ganito mag-analyze. First, what are the accounts affected by the transaction? Next, what type of account is affected? Next, should the account be increased or decreased? And should the account be debited or credited? Later, we're going to have examples kung paano siya ina-analyze depende sa mga examples natin. In analyzing transactions and in preparing journal entries, you have to remember the following. The rules of double entry system are always observed in each transaction. So, always observed in each transaction. So, ano ba yung rules ng double entry system? Una, two or more accounts are affected by each transaction. So, at least two or it can be more than two accounts, pero hindi pwedeng bababa sa two. Then, the sum of the debits for every transaction equals the sum of the credits. Yung total amount mo sa debit at yung total amount mo sa credit dapat ay equals lang dalawa. Pag hindi sila equal, something is wrong. Then, the equality of the accounting equation is always maintained. So, lagi yung tatandaan to, uh, kapag uh, kahit gano kadami yung transactions kapag i-check natin yung accounting equation laging asset is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity so kahit gaano kadami yung transactions basta tama yung entries mo okay what is this one? so sa mga nakapanood na ng video tungkol dito this is just a review of the rules on debits and credits so May video tayo about this, yung the account, debits and credits, and the double entry system. You can check the list of the videos for more details about this. But let, let us have a review of this bago tayo mag-analyze yung transactions. So, nakikita nyo dito, we have D plus E plus A is equal to L plus E plus R. So, D stands for drawings, E is expenses, A assets, L liability, E equity, and R revenue. So, D is equal to L E R or LER. So, D LER. In short, ang tatandaan natin is D LER. Okay, so, paano ba ang gagawin dito? So, yung mga naka-red, ito yung D E A or D. Ano to? Ito yung may mga uh, normal balances na debit. Ang may mga normal balances na debit. Ano yung mga yon? We have drawings, expenses, and assets. Ang normal balance nila ay debit. O para madaling tandaan, D, debit. O, diba? Funny siya or nakakatawa, pero mas madaling tandaan. D, debit. D is drawings, expenses, and assets. Their normal balance is debit. Ano ibig sabihin na pag ang normal balance nila ay debit. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag ang effect ng transaction is ini-increase niya si drawings, expenses, or assets, tayo ay mag-debit. Ulitin ko. If the effect of the transaction is ini-increase or dinadagdagan niya si drawings, expenses, or assets, tayo ay mag-debit. So, the following are recorded as debits, increases in drawing, increases in expenses, and increases in assets. And what if ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya? Si drawing, si expenses, at saka si assets. Anong gagawin natin? O ano ba ang kabaliktara ng debit? O syempre, credit. So, if ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya si drawings, expenses and assets tayo ay mag credit so the following are recorded as credits decreases in drawing decreases in expenses and decreases in assets now we go to this portion ito yung green or yung lure ano ito 
liability, equity, and revenue. Ito naman ang may mga normal balances na credit. Ang kanilang normal balances ay credit. Meaning, if ang effect ng transaction is dinadagdagan, si liability, si equity, or si revenue, tayo ay mag-credit. So, the following are recorded as credits. Increases in liabilities, equity, and revenue. Paano naman kung ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya? Si liability, si equity, at saka si revenue. Siyempre, ang kabaliktara ng credit ay debit. So, kapag ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan, si liability, equity, at revenue, tayo ay mag-debit. I hope maliwanag ha? Yan. Now we go to example of transactions. Sa kapano mag-analyze at mag-prepare ng journal entries. We have cash investment. Atong ating transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested 50,000 in the business. Peter Suarez invested 50,000 in the business. So ang ininvest lamang ni owner ay cash. So analyze natin yung transaction. Unang tanong, ano nga pag mag-analyze ng transaction? Ano ang account na affected? Ano bang ba account na affected? Hmm. Cash. Siyempre, di ba? Cash. Bakit affected si cash? Kasi nagkaroon ng pera eh. Nag-invest si owner sa business. Anong classing account or what type of account is cash? This is an asset. Cash is an asset. Next question is, when Peter Suarez invested 50000 in the business, what happened to our asset? Nadagdagan ba or nabawasan? Nag-increase or nag-decrease? O, analyze natin ano bang nangyari. Dati, wala pang pera ang business. Nung naglagay si Peter Suarez, ang owner, ng 50000 pesos, from 0 to 50000 so what happened to our cash? Nadagdagan, nag-increase. Okay, ano pa ang account na affected? Capital. Bakit capital? Siyempre, nag-invest si owner. So, we have capital. What type of account is capital? This is owner's capital. Then, increase ba or decrease? Ano ba ang effect? Nung si Peter Suarez ay nag-invest ng 50,000 in the business, what is the effect of this in our owner's capital? Nadagdagan ba o nabawasan? O syempre, nung naglagay ng pera si Peter Suarez sa business, nadagdagan ang capital, kaya increase. So, ano ba ang rules? Balikan natin yung rules. Kapag nag-increase daw ang asset, tayo ay mag-de-debit. Diba nga? D. Sa dealer, D. Nandun ang asset. So, debit. Kaya tayo ay mag-de-debit ng cash. Ano pa ang rule? Kapag nag-increase ang equity or capital tayo ay mag credit eto yung sa ler eto yung sa ler equity pag nag increase tayo ay mag credit so ano ang ating entry on may 1 our entry will be debit cash 50000 pesos credit suarez capital 50000 pesos ang ating description that is initial investment Check natin kung walang violation sa double entry system. Total ng debit, total ng credit ay equal. Okay? I hope na intindihan. Now we go to the next example. Dito naman, we have cash investment where a portion of the cash is deposited in the bank. So this is the transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested 50000 in the business, half of which was immediately deposited in the bank. Kapag ganito ang case na yung pera natin ay nakahate or yung pera natin ay may portion na on hand at may portion na nasa banko, then magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang account sa cash. Yung tinatawag natin cash in bank at saka cash on hand. Okay, let us analyze. What accounts are affected? Cash on hand. Anong type ng account si cash on hand? Siyempre, asset. What happened to cash on hand na nag-invest si owner? O nag-increase o nadagdagan? 
Ano pa ang account na affected? We have cash in, bank. Anong type of account? Asset. What happened to our asset no nag-invest si owner? Nag-increase. What account pa ang affected? We have capital. What type of account? This is owner's capital. Nag-increase ba siya or nag-decrease? Of course, nag-increase. So, ano ba ang rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, tayo ay dapat mag-debit. Kapag, ayan, debit yan. Debit cash on hand, debit cash on bank. Kapag nag-increase equity or capital, tayo ay mag-credit. Ayan. So, what will be our journal entry on May 1? Debit cash on hand, 25,000. Debit cash and bank, 25,000. Kasi sabi, half of which daw. So, 50,000 yung pera. Kalahate ay dineposit sa banko. Kalahate ay naiwan on hand. So, tig 25,000 credits. Suarez, capital, magkano? 50,000. Check natin, equal ba ang total ng ating, ito o, oh, ang total ng ating debits, 50,000. Credit, 50,000. Dapat equal sila. I hope na intindihan na. Next, we go to the next transaction. We have cash and non-cash investments. Cash and non-cash investments. Ano naman yung cash and non-cash investments? Ito yung si owner ay nag-invest ng pera at saka nag-invest din siya ng non-cash. Ano yun? Ito yung mga assets na hindi cash. Example, buildings, land, uh, furnitures, equipments. Supplies. Okay. Ito yung mga non-cash na investment. Kasi pag ikaw yung owner, pwede ka mag-invest ng cash at saka non-cash na investment. So, let us have this transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested the following in the business. Cash of 50,000 and office equipment of 10,000 pesos. So, ano yung, magkano yung cash? 50,000. Yung non-cash na in-invest ay ang office equipment amounting to 10,000 pesos. Pesos. Let us analyze the transaction. So, ano ang mga accounts na affected? Oh, cash, syempre. We have cash. What type of account is cash? Asset. What happened to asset? When Peter Suarez invested 50,000 a cash, of course, nag-increase. Then we have office equipment. Another account affected is office equipment. What type of account is office equipment? Ano nga? Asset. Okay. Ano ang nangyari nang nag-invest ng office equipment? What happened to our asset? Nag-increase or nadagdagan. What else is affected? Capital, of course. This is owner's capital. Kasi bakit capital or owner's capital ulit? Kasi nga, this is investment ni owner. Basta nag-invest si owner, lagi yung tatandaan, dapat meron doong capital na account. So, increase or decrease ba ang effect ng transaction? O, nag-increase. Nadagdagan ang ating capital. Now, we have to analyze. So, rules muna. Ano ba ang rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, tayo ay magde-debit. Kaya, we debit cash, we debit office equipment. Pag nag-increase ang equity or capital, tayo ay mag-credit. Kaya, we credit capital. Now, we go to our journal entry. On May 1, what will be our entry? Debit, cash. Magkano? Magkano ba yung ating cash? 50,000. And then, we debit, office equipment, 10,000. Ito nyo mabuti ha. Ayan na naka-debit ha. Debit, cash. Ayan. Debit, office equipment. Ayan yon. Okay. Saan nakuha yung amount? 50,000. Ito siya. 10,000. Ito siya. Okay. What will be our credit? Of course, Suarez Capital. Magkano? Itotal lamang natin, 60,000. Kasi ang in-invest, cash at non-cash, total of 60,000. Now, we check if they are equal. Ayan. Dapat, equal C. Total ni debit, 60,000. Total ni debit, 60,000. Next, investment with assumption of liability. Ano naman ito? Minsan si owner, nag invest siya ng assets niya. Pero, inutang niya to. May balanse pa na utang. Ibig sabihin, binibigay niya yung 
asset niya sa business, pero yung asset na yun, okay, na ini-invest niya, ay meron pang liability na nakakabit or merong utang. So, ang laging question dito is that, sino na ang magbabayad ng natitirang utang or ng balance sa liability kapag in-invest niya ito sa business? Kung si business na, yung sinasabi natin, with assumption of liability, meaning si business na ang magbabayad ng utang, so ganito ang ating mga transactions. So, May 1, Peter Suarez invested cash of 30000 and an office equipment costing 20000 which he bought last year. There is an outstanding liability of 10,000 pesos in the equipment which will be assumed by the business. So, ang ini-invest ni owner ay cash na 30000 at office equipment na binili niya at 20000 Pero yung office equipment, ano daw? May utang pa siya doon na 10000 Ngayon, yung utang daw na 10000 ay alen to be assumed by the business. So, ibig sabihin ang magbabayad na IC business. So, let us analyze. Ano ang accounts affected? Cash, of course. Anong type of account? Asset. What happened to asset? Nag-increase. Ano pang pa affected? Office equipment, syempre. Anong type of account si office equipment? Asset. Okay. Asset. Then, what happened to asset? Of course, nadagdagan. Okay? Ano pa ang affected? We have accounts payable. Ano ba yung accounts payable? This is a liability account. Ito yung utang. Oh. Anong klaseng account siya? Liability. What happened to accounts payable or to liability nung nag-invest si Peter Suarez ng equipment na may utang to be assumed by the business? Siyempre, dati wala pang utang sa business. Or, anong effect? Nadagdagan ang utang ni business. So, increase in liability. And then, what else? Of course, capital, type of account, owner's capital. What happened to capital? Of course, nag-increase. Now, what are the rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, debit, kaya debit cash, debit tayo ng equipment kasi nag-increase ang asset. Ngayon, Anong rule? Kapag nag-increase ang liability and equity, oh, kung natatandaan nyo, ito yung seller. Normal balance nila ay credit. Kapag nag-increase, ano daw? Credit. Yeah. Yeah, credit tayo. So, what will be the entry? Debit. Cash, 30,000. Debit. Office equipment, 20,000. Bakit 20,000? Ayun eh, naman talaga ang Halaga niya, 20,000. Then, credit accounts payable. Magkano yung utang? 10,000. So, bakit pati isasali yung utang? Kasi nga yung utang, magiging utang na ni business. And then, Suarez Capital, magkano? Paano i-co-compute? Ang total investment, 30,000 plus 20,000 minus yung liability na assumed by the business. Minus 10,000. So, we'll get 40,000. So, ayan siya, 30,000 yung cash, 20,000 ang equipment, minus ang 10,000. So, ang totoo talaga na in-invest ni Suarez ay magkano lang? 40,000 lang. Ito lang ang totoong in-invest niya. Kasi nga yung 10,000, babayaran niya ng business. Okay? Check natin, equal ba? 30 plus 20,000, 50 sa credit, we have 50,000. So, equal sila ano? I hope na iintindihan ha? Then, next is investment of asset with a fair market value. May mga owners na nag invest ng assets tapos masasalubong natin sa transaction. Dalawa ang given niya at cost at saka at fair market value. So, nalilito tayo. Ano pa ang isasama natin sa pag-entry? Yung pagbili or yung fair market value? So, Check muna natin the definition of fair market value. So, what is fair market value? It is the amount which the seller will receive for selling a non-cash asset at the present time and in its present condition. So, ano daw ito? Ito yung pagbinenta mo, yung asset ngayon. O, oh, ngayon na kasi kung binili mo ito 5 years ago, oh, kung binenta mo ito ngayon, mabibenta mo siya sa ganitong halaga. O, yun yung kanyang fair market 
value. So, para mas maintindihan, ito ang example natin na transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested cash of 30000 and an office equipment costing 40000 which he bought 3 years ago, but with a fair market value of 25000 So, ano ang in-invest? We have cash, 30000 at office equipment, 40000 Pero, 3 years ago pa yung 40000 na yan na halaga. Ngayon, pag ibibenta natin siya, ang fair market value niya ay 25000 na lang. So, analyze tayo. Ano ang mga accounts affected? Of course, cash. Ano ang cash? Asset. Ano nangyari sa asset? Increase. Next, ano pa? Office equipment. Asset ito. Ano nangyari? Nag-increase. Then, we have capital, of course. Type of account. Owner's capital. What happened to capital? Nag-increase. Now, we have the rules. Pag nag-increase ang asset, debit, kaya debit cash, debit equipment then pag nag-increase ang equity or capital credit okay paano ang ating transaction ay ang ating journal entry on may 1 we debit cash magkano ba ang cash 30000 debit office equipment magkano buti na mabuti ha kung magkano ilalagay natin amount 25000 so laging tatandaan if given ang cost eto at fair market value, ano ang gagamitin nating amount? Ang gagamitin natin ay ang fair market value. Ulitin ko, if given, kapag nag-invest si owner ha, sa business, at given yung cost ng ini-invest niya, na non-cash asset, tapos, given ang fair market value, ang i-record natin ay fair market value. Then, credit tayo, Suarez Capital, 55000 So, let us check. Initial investment equal to 55000 and then 55000 So, I hope maliwanag tayo. So, para mas madaling tandaan, uh, mag-analyze muna ng transactions and then, laging tatandaan ang rules ng debit sa credit. So, madali lang naman mag-prepare ng journal entries. Ang nakakalito lang talaga is that yung hindi mo alam yung effect ng transaction doon sa mga accounts or hindi mo alam ang apektado ng mga accounts so, malaki talaga ang magiging problema kaya very important that you are familiar with the accounts next, alam mo i-classify kung ito ay anong klase ng account next, yung transaction alam mo kung ano ang effect nito increase ba or decrease and then you know the rules in sa ating debit and credit so tatandaan lamang yung dealer. So, I hope na unawaan. So, next na mga videos, more tayo sa mga journal entries ulit, examples ulit ng iba't iba namang mga cases or transactions. So, hopefully, naintindihan ninyo. And thank you. Kung hindi pa nakapag-subscribe, click subscribe. Hopefully, nakatulong itong video sa inyo. Thank you and God bless.